Okay, in 7.4, we're going to talk about how we're going to use that energy in respiration. Um, so we'll talk about NADH transferring electrons to what's called the electron transport chain or system ETS. And uh, ultimately, oxygen is going to be the last part that's going to get those electrons. Once that's done, we're going to see how we generate energy um, by using what's called the hydrogen ion gradient or the proton motive force. But before we do that, I wanted to put in a secret slide to reward those who are watching the videos. Uh, so on exam three, I will ask you again for a definition of diffusion. I will ask you to write this out for me. Remember, diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of a low concentration. So if we have high concentration over here, they will diffuse over to an area of low concentration. And we're going to see this in action um, in the next step of respiration. So respiration is ultimately going to be generating ATP and lots of it by using this hydrogen ion gradient that gets formed. So the electron transport chain, all those electrons that we got are going to pump hydrogens outside the membrane and that's going to make a high concentration and then they're going to flow back into a lower concentration through this molecule called ATP synthase, which is an enzyme that generates ATP. So ATP synthase synthesizes ATP. Um, in microbes, this happens uh, just outside the cell, so um, between the membrane and the uh, um, cell wall. In this one here, eukaryotes, we have little microbes of our own called mitochondria that have a double membrane. So the um, ATP synthase is in this inner membrane and hydrogen ions get pumped out into the space between the two membranes and then they flow back into the inner membrane there. Most of what we talk about is going to be pretty much identical between bacteria and eukaryotes here. It just happens in a slightly different place. Okay, so let's reorient ourselves with what's gone on. So we had glycolysis that happened. Our glucose was broken down into 2 pyruvate. A little bit of ATP got made. Uh, we produced some stored electrons, though. Same thing when we're converting pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, mainly stored electrons. Same thing when we're converting pyruvate into acetyl-CoA, we're primarily storing electrons here. And then the TCA cycle, a little bit of ATP gets made, but mainly stored electrons. So this is where we're at. Those electrons in NADH and FADH2 are going to move to the membrane and the process of the electron transport system is going to use this stored energy to pump hydrogens outside of the cell. They're then going to flow back in through this ATP synthase. Then they're going to make us up to 34 ATP in this process. Okay, so we've removed electrons from the substrates in glycolysis and TCA. And we have them in NADH and FADH2. They need to go to the electron transport system, which is a bunch of enzymes that are embedded in the membrane. Those are going to go through a series of redox reactions that pump hydrogens. This hydrogen gradient is called the proton motive force um, because it can be used to do different things, including drive ATP synthase. For this process to occur, this electron transport, we need what's called a strong oxidizing agent kind of at the end of the chain to pull the electrons through the process. And our strongest oxidizer is oxygen. So that is why in aerobic respiration, oxygen is called the final electron acceptor. It pulls all the electrons through the chain. That's for aerobic respiration. Um, in anaerobic respiration, there is a final uh, strong oxidizer, but it is not oxygen, and it's not quite as strong, so it doesn't work quite as efficiently. At the end of this process, we, have, uh, we will have captured as much energy as we can from sugars or other things that got fed into this process. So again, 
these high energy electrons, right? We have all of them. They're gonna go and be used to do what's called oxidative phosphorylation. So we use those uh, to generate ATP, right? We need energy to take a phosphate and add it to ADP to make ATP. Uh, this process of using these high energy electrons, that's our energy here. This process is called oxidative phosphorylation because it uses redox reactions in here. So the electron transport system or the electron transport chain as it's often called um, is a series of membrane bound enzymes. And those electron carrying molecules, NADH and FADH, go to them and donate hydrogen ions and electrons. And those electrons power the system to pull the uh, hydrogen ions to pump them across the membrane. So this is kind of an active transport here. We're spending energy, not in the form of ATP, but stored energy in the form of NADH to pump hydrogen ions to make a higher concentration outside of the membrane. The last step in this chain is going to utilize oxygen, which is going to be combined with some hydrogen ions to make water in this process. So oxygen is really what's pulling the electrons through this process for aerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, this oxygen is replaced by other molecules, and it is not quite as efficient as this one using oxygen. So less energy will be made overall. So once we have the hydrogen ions pumped outside of the cell, they have a they have a gradient, right? We have high concentration outside, a low concentration inside. They're going to want to flow back in to the cell, right, by diffusion. This is where an enzyme called ATP synthase comes in. ATP synthase is a, it's it's a real cool looking thing. It's got uh, like a little rotor, this little orange thing that actually kind of spins around, and this little ratchet that goes back and forth. Um, and in this process of it moving, it's spun by hydrogen ions, so it's moved by the flow of hydrogen ions in. As it spins, it catalyzes this reaction. A phosphate gets stuck onto an ADP molecule and we get ATP out of that. Of course, this enzyme is super critical to bacterial life. So there are antibiotics that will target it. Uh, treatments for tuberculosis and MRSA both have antibiotics that will target this ATP synthase molecule. The ATP synthase in your mitochondria is very similar um, but is slightly shielded, but it can be affected sometimes by antibiotics. So that's the end of it, right? After we've used that hydrogen ion gradient, we've generated as much ATP as we can. So in total, if you have one molecule of glucose, you can get a maximum of 38 ATP out of it. That's under ideal conditions. We will see that this is... Uh, not always the case, particularly in microbes. But if we compare that to fermentation, fermentation generates two ATP and then just discards the rest. So you can see that aerobic respiration generating 38 is way more than uh, two in fermentation. In the middle there is our um, anaerobic respiration, which will generate less than this, but still a good deal more than fermentation. This is why you can't survive on fermentation alone. Um, and this process uh, for us, mitochondria, they're more efficient than bacteria. So bacteria lose a bit of this to other processes, as we'll see. Let's watch the animation for the electron transport system. Respiration is the overall process of catabolism from the breakdown of a substrate, such as glucose, to the reduction of a terminal electron acceptor, such as oxygen. For each glucose molecule that is catabolized from glycolysis through the TCA cycle, 10 NADH and 2 FADH2 molecules are produced. Each of these molecules contains energy that originated from glucose. Electron transport systems present in the membrane transport the electrons to oxygen, forming water, and in the process convert the energy into electrochemical gradients across the membrane. As the electrons are transferred within the ETS, the ETS pumps hydrogen ions, 
also called protons, across the bacterial cell membrane. As a result, a gradient forms across the membrane, with a higher proton concentration outside than inside. In this way, the energy of the electrons from glucose is transferred to the energy of a proton gradient. The hydrogen ions will tend to move down their concentration gradient back into the cell, and they do so through a complex called ATP synthase. This flow of hydrogen ions through ATP synthase drives the formation of ATP from ADP, an inorganic phosphate. The production of ATP using the hydrogen ion gradient from the electron transport system and the reduction of oxygen is called oxidative phosphorylation. How does the electron transport system operate? An electron transport system consists of a series of electron carriers that sequentially transfer electrons to the carrier with the next higher reduction potential, that is, to a stronger electron acceptor. Electron flow begins with an initial electron donor, such as NADH, from glucose catabolism. Ultimately, all electrons are transferred to the strongest electron acceptor, which in this example of aerobic respiration is molecular oxygen. A typical bacterial electron transport system used in respiration includes at least three functional components, beginning with a complex called NADH dehydrogenase. NADH dehydrogenase then transfers the two electrons onto the second functional component, a quinone, indicated Q. The quinone also picks up two hydrogen ions from the cell to balance the charge, generating quinol, QH2. The redox step from NADH through NADH dehydrogenase to quinol yields enough energy to pump four hydrogen ions across the membrane. Quinones and quinols diffuse within the membrane. Each quinol reduced by NADH dehydrogenase can transfer its two electrons onto the next ETS complex, cytochrome BO oxidoreductase. As part of the electron transfer event, cytochrome BO oxidoreductase pumps more protons. This terminal oxidoreductase now transfers the two electrons onto molecular oxygen. Oxygen has the strongest affinity for electrons of any other component of the electron transport system. In order to become fully reduced, molecular oxygen requires the electrons from an additional NADH molecule. In total, for every two NADH molecules oxidized, 16 protons are pumped across the membrane. The final two electrons join with oxygen and with four protons from the cell, producing two molecules of water. All right, that animation goes into much more detail than we actually need for our understanding of it, but I think it's important to see the process to kind of understand that there are chemistry, there's chemistry happening in there to, to pull the electrons through the chain. So in bacteria, they're a little less efficient at ATP generation because this hydrogen gradient, this proton mode of force, can be used to do some other things. They can directly use it to spin their flagella. Um, they can use it to transport things in and out of the cell, including pumping antibiotics outside of the cell. So this is what's called a drug efflux pump. It pumps antibiotics outside of the cell by using this hydrogen ion gradient. So uh, bacteria don't always convert things into ATP, they just can directly use that energy. So I want to reiterate again that this process can happen in bacteria, and they pump the hydrogen ions out. The same thing is going on in your mitochondria. They're pumping from this inside into the intermembrane space, and that's flowing back through through a similar ATP synthase molecule. Uh, yet more evidence that mitochondria were likely once bacteria. Remember, endosymbiosis has uh, incorporated them into our eukaryotic cells. So we've talked about aerobic respiration, right? Uh, in this case, oxygen was the final electron acceptor, but not all respiration is aerobic. There is also anaerobic respiration where no oxygen is involved. You can have different terminal electron acceptors. It could be iron, um, things like nitrogen containing compounds, sulfur containing compounds. Um, these all work and we have different uh, bacteria that use these processes, but they are not as good as aerobic respiration. So anaerobic respiration will always yield less energy than aerobic respiration. 
It's still a lot more than fermentation, but still less. So respiration, a lot of the energy is going to the electron transport system. Uh, the transfer of electrons from those NADH and FADH, uh, they're going into the membrane bound uh, enzymes and that's gonna pump hydrogen ions across the membrane. That generates a gradient we call the proton motive force. Respiration that uses oxygen as the final electron acceptor we call aerobic, that produces the most energy. Whereas uh, if it doesn't use oxygen, it uses something else, we call it anaerobic respiration. But the same thing is still happening. You're still pumping those hydrogen ions across the membrane, generating the proton motive force. Then in oxidative phosphorylation, we use this proton motive force to drive that ATP synthase and produce lots of ATP. That finishes our use and extraction of energy from glucose, but we're gonna see a couple of other processes and then we'll come back around to uh, talk briefly about the building up processes in a bit.